A Second Life celebrates its 21st anniversary. There's never been a better time to explore this amazing virtual world. Whether you're curious about what Second Life has to offer or you're just starting your journey, this video is for you. Today, I'm talking to some experienced residents to get their insights, advice, and stories to help you get the most out of your Second Life experience. Let's dive into the questions. What advice would you give to someone just starting out in Second Life? I would say definitely have money on hand, at least some money, because you're going to need money to get your avatar started. Um, but there's, you could look around for freebies too, so you could search for some decent lower priced items, you know, there's some lower priced items out there, you know, some some stores have like a free head every now and then or um, but yeah you definitely want to come prepared with money and maybe try to meet other people too so you can kind of get kind of make you know meet talk make friends to try to get some advice from other people because I know when I first started oh my gosh like I got so much help from other people and that really helped me. I remember that. I'll never forget it. How much that helped me um, from others. So yeah, say that is a good start. Um, definitely watch some videos, tutorials, maybe. Um, uh, do the help island. Do the whole tutorial that you go through on how to move, how to jump, how to walk. <laughs> um, the, the whole like how to find things and stuff there's a lot of stuff you end up learning over time but um, yeah just the general like movements and stuff those are important to know right away and then then you can work on your avatar and customization and all that don't give out too much personal information and Stay on your guard. Don't ever trust anybody 100%. Um, always save back a little bit of that skepticism. But have a good time. Just to be, you know, like normal person to, to treat, to, to understand that behind every avatar is a real person, you know. And... Uh, to treat everybody with, with respect is I'm on some sim, you know, exploring sim. So now I'm flying around the sim. Yeah. You know. And I saw somebody also on a nearby that uh, somebody's on a sim. So I zoom on it. So girl totally naked standing under some bridge. Okay. So uh, I I was like, uh, hi, hi, like, uh, why are you naked? She said, oh, you can see me? I said, yeah, I can. I zoom on you. I can see you. <laughs> she thought if she hide under the bridge, nobody can see her. <laughs> she was new in the game. She took off her clothes and she didn't know how to put it back. <laughs> Uh, but that's nothing you should see me when, when I started the game. So I opened my inventory and I wanted like to put the clothes on. So now I saw a box. Now in that time, uh, when I was starting, you, you had to go into a res area, put box in a res area, unres it and then put clothes on. So I didn't know that. Why? Because I didn't go on orientation. Why to go on orientation? That's stupid. It's a game. I'm going to figure it out, <laughs> you know, by myself. So I saw a box in the in inventory. I was like, okay, click on box, add, and box end up on my head. Now I don't know how to remove box from my head. I was trying everything, you know, try to grab it, move it, you know, nope on the head so i don't care i'm just walking around i sell with a <laughs> box on my head oh my gosh <laughs> until one day someone i am here help with that box on your head yes please <laughs> so 
that's advice to everybody. Go on orientation. Learn how to use it, things in a game. <laughs> or starting second life. Go on orientation. Uh, listen what people say there. Follow everything. Write it down if it's necessary. It's gonna be helpful. So you're not gonna be walking with a yellow box on your head around. Yeah, I guess the first thing would be just to explore and find out if SL is something you actually want to invest your time and money into. Because you could probably waste a bit of money um, buying all the fancy stuff initially and then figure out that it's not for you. So just, I don't know, don't spend too much on it initially. Just see if it's something that you enjoy, explore, try out lots of things. You don't That's have to. You don't have to spend money though if you don't want to, because. No, you don't have to. But the avatar that you start with is is not that great. Um, there's a lot of potential to spend a lot of money in here and make huge improvements to your avatar, whether it's clothing or skins or heads or whatever. But there's so much choice that um, you could easily waste a lot of money. So don't do that straight away. Um, I think I would think in terms of saying, you know, buy it, approach it, um, absorb it, come without expectations, uh, take a bit of time out to look at, um, look at yourself, look at the options, um, learn how the options work, um, have a, an image in your mind as to how you'd like to potentially be seen by the people around you um, and work to that. Uh, one of the things I have found is that um, when I've started playing, or doing, not playing, but living virtual uh, virtual worlds and virtual lives, is that the remuneration, the, the, the financial structure is such that they like you to sometimes invest and constantly buy new bodies, new heads, new skin tones, new clothes. And every time you change that body or that head or that skin tone, well, not so much the skin tone, but every, those other items, you're going to have to buy all new outfits and all new clothes for that. It's how they make their money. So the golden bit of advice I'll give everybody is aim for high end from day one. And that way they don't have to think in once a place. Um, so when you join Second Life, you find that a lot of clubs and places sometimes don't like comers to be in there straight away because, I mean, there are sometimes issues with playing out um, with chat bots and things like that working out there as well. So it's sometimes a good idea to take that time out to really get to grips with how your own avatar is working as well as potentially start to explore places which are new client friendly. Uh, and once you've done that and you start to get that under your belt, you'll find that you progress an awful lot more rapidly through the Second Life uh, community you can otherwise. That's what I found anyway. Yeah. How do you express your real life personality through your Second Life avatar? My lovely real life personality just just comes on right through my avatar. Like there's no helping it. I I don't have any pretenses or any like I'm just who I am in here and that shows through my avatar too. So I don't know, I just, I, I guess I'm just myself, both places, both worlds. So I try to just, yeah, show that through my avatar and it just comes freely. Sometimes I don't like that, <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> you can't help it sometimes, you just, you know, you start talking to people and, you know, your real life comes out. You're, you sh have shared experiences, real life, SL. Um, for me, I share my real life avatar, like my, my real life avatar, my real life self with my avatar. So I have similar color hair, similar color eyes, similar color skin. 
I like tattoos, I like piercings. I don't have, of course, the same body type and everything's not perfect, but I try to stick to some similarities. So that's kind of where I feel my avatar connects to me and you get kind of accustomed to that's that's me that's my avatar and then what you push out there to people is your personality your likes your dislikes and that's the connection there i'm not here to i'm not role playing a character i'm not um trying to pass myself off as someone else um when i interact with people it's it's genuine it's it's me. Um, this is my avatar, and I'm operating through it. The way I speak through this avatar is the way that I speak to people in real life. Um, I kind of look the same as I do on both, to be perfectly frank. Um, I've I've got something which, as I say, when I joined joined a couple of years ago, um, I've literally made it look like me. Um, I probably did the second life thing to start with and went for the generic black hair, long beard, uh, grizzly things, which lasted me all of about two to three months and eventually thought, no, this isn't for me. I'll just look like myself. Um, and that's what I've done. Um, and I've been, I've stayed with it ever since. I've not had to change it, not had to change proportions or anything like that. Um, just have to go out and buy, occasionally buy a new outfit. Um, and new clothing or something like that, maybe for an event I'm going to or, or whatever. Um, I get a lot of joy out of uh, making other people happy through things I've developed or things that I've, I've created. Um, that's uh, that's what I really enjoy doing. Um, but yeah, so, so it's all really, I'm, I'm, I'm the same person that I am um, outside of Second Life as I am inside, um, as you can probably tell from my rather odd sense of humour <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well. I'm the same in a, in a second life, like well, I'm in a, in a real life, so some people, you know, come in this game and uh, to fulfill some their fantasies that they cannot do it in a real life, mm. they are afraid to do it in a real life or whatever, you know, me personally, I don't have any fantasies, I, I, I'm the same person in a real life in a, in a cell. I'm yeah. trying to respect everybody, not to be an asshole, you know, towards people. Although some people deserve to be an asshole towards them, you know. Mm. But uh, I, I'm trying to, to respect everybody. So if if somebody, you know, try to be an asshole, I, I just ignore them. You know? There is a mute button and uh, I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I have a big personality. I think I tend to be really wild and, and crazy. Uh, somebody once described me as a three ring circus. Not because I look like I wear a circus tent, but um, because I'm like doing multiple things at once. So you usually see me with googly eyes on my butt and on my chest um a lighted hula hoop around me something crazy flashy and then i go with like my real life hair color and that sort of stuff comes out i think that the longer you're here the more your real life personality affects it and and like I wear jeans in real life all the time. I now pretty much wear jeans in SL all the time. Just, just little, little things. What do you think is the biggest misconception about Second Life and its community? I think the biggest misconception about Second Life is that we're all just a bunch of gamers playing The Sims. People don't really know how deep like the friendships and the connections go. And They'll say, oh, you're just playing that game, it's not real. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of very real. Yeah, I like agree. The connections you make with people, and yeah. Hmm. It's, it's a game. It's interesting. It's hard to find, but yeah. 
It is interesting when you get two types of people um, in Second Life. You get the ones that view it as a game, and then you get the ones that review it as, as effectively an extension of their own personality. Um, the problem comes when those two camps come together and start to conflict, because you can get sometimes the people that are living their own reality and their own existence in a Second Life community come across someone that's just playing it for kicks. Um, and that person can do all sorts of crazy things that you would not even dare to consider in real life. And yeah. at the end of the day, they're playing with real feelings, they're playing with real people, and people can get upset them and get hurt as a result of that. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, I've known people within virtual worlds that, you know, have, you know, have, have, have been, virtual worlds have become a crutch to them, both emotionally um, and indeed also from a community aspect as well. Um, and in some cases, those people have passed on um, through illness or, or whatever. Um, the emotions you feel of that loss are real. You, you may be looking at a cartoon character, a phrase to describe it, but there's still the real person behind that. Um, and yes, once, you get in, once you get that involved and you get immersed in that character, if you like, that character becomes effectively an extension of that person. And that person goes, you miss them. Yeah. Mm. I think people, it's changed over the years, let me say this. I think as of now, the way it stands, people see SL as a way to get quick gratification. They come here to play it like a video game for adult gratification. <laughs> I don't know a nice way to put it for this interview. But I have seen so many more people come up to you and start a conversation with, hey babe, nice backside. I've got equipment that would look really great in it. Um, and the amount of people that immediately want your Discord information and they want to give you the codes to their toys. And you're like, wait a minute, what happened to Hi? What's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? Um, and everybody is sleeping with everybody. And if you don't, they are. And if you aren't one of those people that are okay with sleeping around, um, you're quickly dropped. If I can share a message from the other day, I heard, you're as humorous as you are beautiful. <laughs> I'd like to rub your butt in a circular motion anytime. It's beautifully chiseled. Definitely should come with a government warning on it. This ass is dangerous. Can I play with it? I did not get a... Uh, right. I didn't get a... Hi. I'm so-and-so. Or nice Abby. Or I like your profile. Or, and I'm telling you, this past week alone with me just going out to shopping events shopping events for clothes the people that have been in my box and i used not to have that it it used not to be that way and that when you do have conversations with people they immediately are talking do you want to go back to my place do you have discord do you voice do you have lovin's I'm like, what's a lovin's? What does that do? Oh, that's what that does. Like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't have that. Um, it's just, it's insane to me that the younger people that are coming in, even the older people are so much more aggressive with the sexual content and less about wanting to get to know the people. I said, even when I have messaged people to just say like, hey, I really like your shirt. Where's it from? Well, you can take it off of me. What? That's not why I'm messaging you. I genuinely want to know where your shirt is from. There, I went to um, Exhale, the club, Exhale. Fantastic club. Love the music. Love the DJs. But especially there. Um... I was like, wow, things just revved from like one to a hundred in the amount of people that are just like, boom, 
this is what I'd like to do to you. Boom, boom, boom. And I thought how quickly people are on your friends list and off your friends list because you're not engaging in what their interests are. And I remember the SL where you used to be able to, what's your age, where are you from? How's the weather? Have you always lived there? Oh my gosh, me too. You know, what kind of food do you like? What's your favorite color? And you genuinely got to know people and became friends. And it's why some of my closest friends I've had for 15 and 17 years, because you gained those connections and it wasn't just sexual. I would have to say that everything is about sex. <laughs> That's the biggest misconception. Yeah. Uh, cause most people that get on here, that's the first question. Can you have sex? Yes, you can have sex on air. Okay. That's your answer. But there are a hundred million things other than sex you can do on here. You can do so many other things, you know, there's, you can be a creator. You can be into photography. You can be into modeling. You can be in the fashion. You can be a motorcyclist. You can be a role player. You can you know, be into gaming, whatever you're passionate about, you know, like there is a spot in here for you. And the community is very loving and accepting. It's not judgmental. It's not hateful. It's very understanding. And that is one thing that's kept me here this whole time. It's like, no matter what you're into, no matter the taboo, <laughs> you are accepted. It's just a really great place to be. Mm -hmm. And I think every time you put into something in search, I've noticed every time you search for something, let's say you're searching for something completely innocent, mm -hmm. you know, and unrelated to sex. Well, guess what comes up? Sex. sex. Like you're looking for for anything else. Like you're looking for something so innocent and then sex comes up. So like, yeah. that's the down. Yeah, that's the downside is everything is centered around some sort of sexual activity you know which gets old when you're actually trying not to be in that mind frame you know and you're trying to just look for something normal or unsexual related and you know i'll be the first to admit like i love to hang out at certain adult places like you know, that could be my vibe sometimes, but like, it's not all about SL. It's not what mm. SL completely is. There's so much more to SL than just that. And for many people, it's sex is not an equation at all for them in SL. That's true. Well, lots of people probably think it, it, it's just sex, sex. It's not like that, you know? It's not like that. It's uh, there are other things except that, you know. I mean, you 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 can uh, you see I have a bike here, you know, which I often go on a race track and ride a bike, you know, or you can build. Uh, I in the beginning when when I start playing this game, I start learning building i was building some stuff you know on my land uh, then i uh, switched to to build the uh, shapes for avatars you know i wanted to learn to build clothes but i came here to do some other stuff you know. is it worth joining second life in 2024 yes there is a lot of criticism. Um, the community's numbers, um, obviously in legacy days, I do here have been higher, busier. No? People are very much more um, aware of their looks, um, the closeness of reality, closest they can get to reality. So you start to get effectively two types of people in Second Life. The ones that want to live like a cartoon or, you know, something that's very stylized and idealized. And the people that actually want to try and produce something that's a reflection of themselves and then live it inside a Second Life world. We need to live it inside a Second world. And that's pretty much what I do. Um, so, from from that point of view, 
yeah i mean there's, there's a whole number of different options out there uh that's that that's the way i tend to play it oh definitely yeah definitely is there's um it's improved so much it's um it's better than it has ever been so yeah definitely yeah back in the day everything was really new and exciting um and there are a lot of people jumping in and just going wild um there were probably less restrictions on things as well um that was good and bad um so i think i think things were a little bit wilder there was a lot more people around um, but I, I think there was a couple of global financial crises that really did some damage to the population in SL um, and things haven't been as fun really yeah but there is still fun to be found I don't go looking for it but I've heard from other people <laughs> that there's still fun things to do in here oh, and if you're into building or creating then it's still just it, it's better than it ever was like if you want to make things and create then it's still fantastic for that. It is, you know, it doesn't matter which year it is. It's a social game, you know. You socialize, you meet people, you get some new friends, you met some interesting people, some that are not interesting. I think it is absolutely with the right expectations. Um, I think if you're here to meet people and just have a good time and a laugh, you're gonna have a great time here. I think it is harder to meet genuine people and broker real friendships and relationships. Um, but if you're just gonna have a good time, absolutely, it's still a fun place to be. Yeah, I think it's worth it. It's Definitely a lot different than joining it back when I joined it in 2009. I mean, it's just a whole different world now in SL than it was then. But it's still worth it. I think, like for me, I don't know if it's just because I've aged, but SL has changed a lot for me over the years. So it's like it has a different feel now than it used to. So I don't know if I would, I don't know how I would feel coming in and in 2000 like how would I feel like I I don't know if I would have the same experiences that I once had but maybe maybe I would it's changed better for the avatars definitely for our Abby look like oh yeah mesh you know and furniture and Abby's and just you know things you could buy just all that stuff has changed way for the better but I think there's other things lacking now that there used to be back in the good old days in SL, like certain clubs, certain places to go, certain... I don't know. I, I feel like there's other changes that has happened that hasn't been so great in SL over the years, like as of right now, but as a whole, I think, yes, I think it would be enjoyable to join SL as of now for the first time. Give it a go. Whew, that is a tricky question. Um, I think because we started so long ago, uh, 2010, I think, is when I first started. Uh, just everything was very different. Like everyone started so fresh and was just getting to know this and the whole thing was so different i think now since we've been on so long there's a a bit of nostalgia a bit of sentimental factor to us where you know we have all this history to us that it's a different experience for us but if someone to start fresh now might not get that same feeling and I think a lot of the young ones that come in now you know they don't quite appreciate it maybe as we have 
so but i do think the fun is still there i mean you have anything you want here on sl so if you can dream it you can think it and be it and the opportunities are there so it's it's fun for anybody so it's just i don't know it just it, it is whatever anybody wants it to be your sl is your yours to be had as for my own take if you're joining second life start at the welcome hub and watch youtube tutorials while there are free options having some money helps for an awesome avatar and accessing cool content don't fall for misconceptions yes adult content exists but sl offers so much more it's not just a game but a platform for global connections creativity and self-expression you can explore art enjoy live music design fashion or dive into virtual photography. Second Life is worth joining regardless of your background or age, 18 plus, as long as you're patient with the learning curve and keep your expectations realistic. It's a unique virtual world with endless possibilities. We've covered a lot of ground today, but there's still so much more to explore. I have more questions and answers from our experienced residents, but I didn't want this video to run too long. So keep an eye out for part two and possibly part three in this series. Now I'd love to hear from you. If you're new to Second Life or considering joining, what questions do you have that weren't addressed? What aspects are you most curious about? For our veteran residents, what's your favorite Second Life memory or experience you'd like to share with newcomers? Drop your thoughts, questions and stories in the comments below. Let's keep this conversation going and help each other make the most of our Second Life experiences. If you enjoyed this style of video, please let me know in the comments or send me a message. And if you'd like to be part of this video series, feel free to contact me in world. This is Priska Newell from Second Life Spectrum. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, let's raise a virtual glass to Second Life's 21st birthday and keep exploring this ever-evolving digital world.